in the hallway announced that I've found the party. The Riviera is the only casino on the Strip willing to host a week-long party for cross-dressers and trans women. For tonight's event, the organizers have rented the penthouse suite on the top floor of the South Tower. A little vestibule separates the hallway from the penthouse, so it's not until I park the beaded curtains at the entranceway that I take in both the scene of the party and the accompanying rush of disappointment. I will not be finding friends here, and I am dumb for thinking I ever would. I'm like an eighth grade girl who thought she'd find a clique of popular girls at the Tuesday night senior citizen bowling league. I see none of the girls from Facebook, none of the girls who wrote to say that they wanted to go. In fact, I see no one below the age of 40. Everyone already knows each other and looks two to five decades older than I am, mostly cross-dressers with the smattering of older trans women. The theme of the party is lingerie love, named after a longtime attendee to the party, Virginia Love, who loved lingerie and passed of a heart attack earlier in the year. That earlier in the year. To my embarrassment, quite a few of the cross-dressers recognize me as, quote, that online sissy, even though I'm wearing one of the most demure dresses there, a knee-length black cocktail dress. Why didn't you wear one of your fabulous sissy outfits, asks a middle-aged woman wearing a short prom dress, who's decided to be encouraging of what she takes to be a shy girl who just needs a little prodding to bloom. This is exactly the place where you could have worn those ruffles. This is a Diane Von Furstenberg dress, I say. I want it to look classy. <laughs> a tall trans woman overhears and laughs, a sort of tut-tut sound. This prom queen announces her drink needs refreshing, and the tall woman spins on a pair of wedged heels to appraise me. You can't expect a cross-dresser to care about brands, she said. They dress with their cocks. The shorter the skirt, the better. Women dress with, for each other, which is why I can tell you that's a nice dress. Yours too, I say, although I don't actually like it. A white, black, a white or black polka dot dress in a funny shape, short enough that you can see the tattoo of a teddy bear on one thigh. Thank you, honey. I'm Sally, she says, leaning forward for an introductory cheek kiss. Sally Sandslaw. Her face is ageless in the way that certain plastic surgeries erase years but don't quite restore youth. I'm Chris, I say. Good, says Sally. Now, Chris, tell me something important. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? Mm -hmm. Sally wants to introduce me to another trans woman, Olivia, who founded the party. But as we're threading our way through the crowd, Sally shoots out a ringed hand and grabs my wrist like I'm about to step into traffic. Look at that, she says. That's some silence of the land shit. She's looking at a very tall, older trans woman dressed like a dominatrix on the other side of the room. The outfit? I'm a little shocked at her reference. The Buffalo Bill character is a real sore spot for a trans woman online, I've noticed. It won't show up about it. No, Sally cracks me and puts a foot, pulls me a foot to the left, behind her. Cross-dressers and all sort of, sorts of fetish attire fill the room. To me, it either all looks like spectacle or none of it looks like spectacle, so I can't figure out what the silence of the line of shit might be. Then I see the masker. Oh, shit. The words come out involuntarily. Yeah, says Sally, I told you. Eye holes in a garish, motionless face, the barest bump of a ski jump nose, and fat lips perpetually parted on the cusp of a moan. A bad blonde wig. It takes me a moment to process the costume that hangs from the curves of the silicone suit. It's an abused cheerleader getup. Flared skirt, white top embroidered with the letter C in a collegiate font, but the arm hangs in a sling, and a purple circle of makeup smeared on the silicone face approximates a black eye. The masker is alone, at the edge of the dance floor, vamping like a starlet as, at his reflection in the plate glass window, the poreless silicone skin wrinkling and folding at the joints. Olivia said he was coming, Sally fumes. He was on an episode of TLC's My Strange Addiction. There were a bunch of female maskers, but the episode focused on him, even though he never took off his mask. I told Olivia to refund his money, but she has no standards. She thinks anyone who registers can come. I didn't go through everything. Sally waves up and down her body to be in the same club with that kind of pervert, but Olivia wouldn't listen. I'm openly staring. When he turns, two, glittering, two eyes glittering in the mask catch mine. I expect him to stop moving, but he doesn't. He gyrates more, putting on a show for Sally and me, his movements heavy with sexual gratification. I see nothing between the skirt and the silicone skin, 
but from the disturbing knowledge that comes from distinguishing in others the parts of yourself that you most hate, I know that beneath that silicone suit, his cock is hard. If he doesn't stop looking at me, I swear I'm going to punch him, says Sally. For a moment, I tell myself that she's wrong. You can't judge anyone, much less punch someone for enjoying their fetish. But no, this is icky. He is icky. Icky in a way that disturbs me. Icky in the ways I suspect the ugliest parts of myself to be. He reminds me of the pictures I've taken of myself alone, in outfits that speak to some deep archetypal part of me. My body hidden in ruffles, my hard cock peeping out, my eyes dilated from the pleasure of it. Pink fog, cross-dressers call it. The distorting euphoria of dressing, of finally giving in. Other people are staring at him too now, now too. Some smirking, some disgusted. He turns back to his reflection in the window, running his hands up and down his silicone skin, stripper style, pink fog degassing, degassing through the seams of the suit. This is my first ever trip to Vegas. I'd never seen the allure until recently, now that I live in the drabest part of rural Iowa. These days I'm like a bird for anything shiny and glitzy. After college, uh, I received exactly one job offer as an archivist at the largest collection of railroad memorabilia in the country, housed at Grinnell College in Grinnell, Iowa, a small liberal arts school sandwiched into the thin plain between dead blonde corn and anvil sky. My last year of college, I barely went out. On Friday nights, while my friends pre-gamed and played beer pong, I camped out in my room with the door locked, jerking off to forced feminization erotica or browsing fetish clothes on eBay. This, the prospect of Iowa and the train museum appeared more and more enticing as a retreat, a place to resolve my weird gender shit, to, to dress up alone and read those forced film stories, or better yet, to figure out how to never have to dress up again, then arrive to some glimmering coastal metropolis, triumphant and cured. But nothing has really changed except that I'm lonely, and now I know so fucking much about trains. Want to know what distinguishes the standard wheel layout on a 1912 Alco steam locomotive from the company's distinctive mountain edition locomotive of the same year? Neither do I. But the difference between the two, I can tell you, is that the 482 wheel arrangement on the mountain edition is better for pulling heavy loads up steep slopes than the more efficient and standard 284. Usually, the most exciting moment of my day comes when I check the messages on the Facebook profile for my girl self. I post a lot of selfies and different outfits on there, and some porny shots too. My inbox is all flattering, pushy letters from men in faraway cities and countries. Hi, I love you, she male lady. Walk on me. Please step on me all over. <laughs> Last fall, I had around 2,000 followers, but after I got a sissy dress, my follower account exploded. A Republican fundraiser in Florida sent me the dress. The dress is classic sissy fetish. Super pretty boys dressed in ridiculously feminine satin outfits. Frills and bows dripping in a profusion not seen on a cis woman since the fall of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. <laughs> <laughs> when I opened the box, the ruffles of the petticoats spilled their confines like overcarbonated soda. Of all the cross-dresser fetishes you can have, the sissy fetish is probably the most embarrassing, the most politically fraught. At least cis women wear latex and leather, but only sissies wear sissy dresses. Still, the first time I saw myself in it, saw the silhouette I cut in the full short skirt and puffy sleeves, I never wanted to take it off. The dress overwhelms my body. My shoulders, my biceps, my narrow hips, all invisible when I wear a sissy dress. The only thing you see is the most old-fashionedly girly of shapes. There's a kind of safety in it, too. You can't even shame me for not looking like a woman because it's a sissy dress. Calling me a faggot or a perv when I wear it is just redundant. <laughs> At first, I wore the dress to read my favorite types of stories, forced feminization erotica on sites like Fiction Mania or Nifty.org. All the stories follow the same basic narrative. A powerful person feminizes an ostensibly unwilling male who comes to accept his, her, his slash her feminization. <laughs> The stories just swap in an author's pre preferred fetishes, details, and the acceptable degree of coercion and humiliation. I like the ones with the handsome man making a boy into a sissy girl. I discovered forced fun stories when I was 13 and have been reading them ever since. 
There's 20,000 or so stories on just the website Fictionania, and my sense of aloneness dissipates when I imagine the sheer volume of people, not just writing, but reading shared versions of my sexuality and fantasies. And then, once I had the sissy outfit, I could suddenly dress like the boys in the stories, not just read about them. I had only to post a few pics of myself sissified and pouting before some sissy blogs and tumblers discovered them. I hit the 5,000 friend count allowed by Facebook within a month, and then I had to make a page for myself as a celebrity. These other girls, also part-time cross-dressers, but flirting with transition in porn, with follower accounts in the tens of thousands, started liking my photos, commenting on my posts, and chatting with me. The other girls go on and off hormones that they buy online, trying to sand off their masculine